Hi, I'm JC Xue, Portfolio Manager at Ford Asset Management, and I'm here to share more colour on the Global Equity Fund's performance through the third quarter of 2021. The fund underperformed during what turned out to be a volatile quarter for the global equity markets. Robust corporate earnings and investor optimism for synchronised global growth gave way to concerns of increasingly hawkish global central banks and the probable near-term commencement of quantitative tapering. Point to point, global equities declined 1% over the quarter. Emerging equities was down 8%, underperforming developed markets largely due to the underperformance of Chinese market, which was down 18%. Negative Chinese investment sentiments swelled during the quarter. Initially troubled by renewed regulatory uncertainty, particularly in the China's technology and consumer-facing sectors. Investors then fretted over slowing growth, and finally, to a potential credit default by China's largest property developer, Evergrande. As we have communicated many times before, we have been and remain constructive on the investment opportunities offered by our Chinese investments. During periods of increased volatility within the Chinese market, however, Funds returns will be affected, as was the case this quarter. Against the 1% decline in equity markets, the Global Equity Fund declined 9%, largely due to the fund's holding in China, which currently makes up 23% of the portfolio. Now, before diving into China, let me first highlight the meaningful contributors to fund performance during the period. Our allocation to and stock selection within the industrial sector contributed the most to fund returns during the quarter. Investments in Quanta Services, which was up 26%, and SAP, up 7%, drove returns within the sector. Investors have become increasingly positive on Quanta, a leader in construction and maintenance of the US electric grid, following the inclusion of $75 billion in spending to be directed exclusively at improving the electric grid in a recently passed infrastructure legislation. SAP, the top Swedish defence firm and manufacturer of the Gripen fighter aircraft reported strong second quarter revenue and cash flow while increasing guidance for the third quarter. Now coming back to China, there remains pervasive fear around the investability of the Chinese market given rising regulatory risk. However, dissecting communication from Chinese leaders, we can see how regulatory actions are meant to correct market failures that have unintended social consequences detrimental to the nation's long-term development. Antitrust regulations, for one, are aimed to reduce rent-seeking behaviour of dominant tech platforms and promote an environment of fairer competition for next generation of innovators to emerge. Ultimately, the government wants to build a stronger middle class and view private enterprise essential in driving wealth creation and fulfilling its common prosperity goals. Businesses that are built upon treating customers fairly and innovating through healthy competition over monopolistic practices will thrive in the long run. Two of our core Chinese holdings, Tencent and JD.com, fit this mold and should experience robust long-term earnings growth in an environment of healthier competition following regulatory changes. We added to both positions during recent market weakness. At Ford, we remain long-term investors focused on forecasting earnings many years into the future. We believe strongly that a firm's underlying earnings will determine its ultimate value. Though mindful of never taking a zero-one bet, at present, we see considerable opportunity in Chinese equities and have invested a sizable portion of our fund's assets into what we believe are high-quality, consumer-focused companies that we expect to keep compounding earnings for the foreseeable future.